Breeding for the ability to jump the big sticks and be competitive at the highest level is tricky. You see, the horse need not only the conformation to withstand the demand of the sport, but also the reflexes and the adjustability required for tough courses. But all this has to be paired with enough sanity over their drive to jump to make them actually rideable. Having mostly bred dressage horses, I dove into the research for this particular video with the help of some very experienced jumper breeder. Here's a deep dive into the stallion Balou de Rouet. What genetic brought him to where he's at now? What has he contributed? And what is he still contributing today to the jumper breeding world? The first thing you realize once you start looking into Balou de Rouet's bloodline and descendant is that the name all starts to blend together. You see, his sire line has been so successful that the name is part of the branding, the recognition. So we have Baloo's and Boobaloo's and Bobaloo's and Bobaloo's and Baloo suede shoes and Balunito. I, I could go on and on. The history of the sire line of Balu de Rue was played out at the top of the sport and very much in the horse's public eye. His sire and his grandsire haven't made enough headlines that even the casual person interested in show jumping would probably recognize the names. The grandsire, Galoubet, was bred in France from one of the pillars of French breeding, Alme. And out of an um, unconventional dam, to say the least. Viti. You see, Galoubet's dam Viti was a tall French trotter that failed as a racehorse but showed some serious talent over fence, although she was a little bit quirky and hard to ride. So she quickly transitioned to broodmare duties, but she did produce jumpers and three licensed stallions. Now, back in the 1970s and the 1980s, the idea of a trotter excelling over fence was not that odd, actually. And we must not think of the French trotter of the time in any way similar to the American standard bread that we know today. At least two trotters that became jumping superstars star will be remembered forever, Hala and Japelou. And now Viti, the dam of the founder of such a popular and successful line, I think her name can be added to that list. Galoubet, even though he was ironically passed over as a three-year-old as being big and a bit too ugly by Nelson Pessoa, did end up competing at the highest level of the sport. Now, I say ironically because Nelson Pessoa would eventually buy his son, Balubé du Rue and pass on the reign to his own son, Rodrigo Pessoa. But I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Galupe was big, 17 hand big, coarsely built with a big trotter head. So he was not very pretty, but he could jump. But on the other hand, he was not an easy ride either. Galupe was actually the first stallion to be offered for artificial insemination. It seems hard to believe these days that there was a time where AI, artificial insemination, was actually prohibited. But Galoubet was the first to be offered to breed her this way once the rule was relaxed and the registry started to accept horses bred in that matter. It was not very popular at first. Like most new things, there was a lot of hesitation. Also, breeders were hesitating to breed to Galoubet. He was somewhat of an oddly bred animal, but he eventually proved them all wrong. His first foal crop, born by artificial insemination, were spectacular. Over 50% of them reaching the highest level of the sport. Among them, perhaps you've heard of Quickstar. He started his own line lineage. However, it did take quite a few years for those foals to show their talent over the big fence. And at the start of his breeding career, Galoube was just not that popular in Europe, and he was therefore syndicated and moved to Hamilton Farm in the US. Hamilton Farm, they were betting on artificial insemination taking off, and they were building a roster of top stallions. He actually spent the rest of his breeding career there, and he died at 33 years old. He produced over 600 offspring on both sides of the Atlantic, and he achieved a jumping breedy value of 150. Not too bad. There is no question that his most famous son was definitely Baloubé du Rouet. Bought as a three-year-old, like I mentioned, by Nelson Pessoa, he went on to win everything with Nelson's son, Rodrigo Pessoa. Three World Cup back to back to back, 1999, 2000, 2001, and then ending up in second at the World Cup in 2002 and in 2003. That's five years at the absolute top of the sport, answering all the questions the course designers could ask and often doing it 
with zero fault. He was also medaled at two Olympic Games. As a horse, he was tall, not particularly attractive, but not very well confirmed either. He had his fault, but he had a lot of balance and tons of scope. As a stallion, he was known to pass on his size, a lot of blood, scope, and sharpness, but without being too hot. Breeders were simply careful to choose well-conformed mare to breed to him. But breed to him they did, and with great success. He went on to produce 122 meter 60 jumpers, and he has 119 approved sun. He has a breeding index for jumping of a staggering 175. One of his sons, of course, is Balou de Rouet. Balou's dam was by the stallion Continue, um, and by all measure, that was a pretty average producing stallion from Holstein, nine approved son, 13 offspring jumping at the top of the sport. Himself was the son of the great contender, but out of a very average dam line. However, Georgia, Balouz de Ruez Dam, had a very good dam line from jumping horses. All of them, a lot of production of horses jumping at different height, uh, coming from different sire line, but consistently showing the ability to produce horses with talent over fences. She managed to produce 23 offspring, of course, to be fair, 11 of them by embryo transfer. Balou de Rue himself has four full siblings, none of them as talented as him, but five of his half-siblings, meaning they also came out of Georgia, his dam, are international caliber show jumper, showing that the talent from this mare line really brought it. So there's no question where Balou de Rue uh, inherited his talent. Both sides of his pedigree are just stacked with it. But while jumping is one of the most inheritable traits, we will see that there's a lot of nuance behind what makes a good jumper today. If Balou de Rue was Galoubet's best jumping son, Balou de Rouet was a Baloubet de Rouet best stallion son. See what I mean about the names? Balou de Rouet started out in the young horse classes where he dominated. He was judged many times to have a near ideal jumping form and excellent scope. He eventually did go up the level all the way to meter 50, but he soon retired to stud where he became very popular very quickly. You see, he was bred owned and managed by Paul Schokamoli, and that certainly helped, but he also became one of their most popular stallion. So, what makes a good jumper? Everyone thinks of scope, the ability to jump big and wide and have enough power to get out of trouble when the distance is not quite right. But these days, you, you can have a lot of power, but that's not all you need. You also need carefulness, agility, and a strong desire to jump, but balanced with rideability, because the courses are very technical. So in evaluating a jumping stallion, breeders will look beyond just, you know, what we look for, the front leg technique. No, 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 they judge a lot more. They look at the way that the horse will round their back over the jump, how they take off, how brave they are to the fence, but also, very importantly, how they use their hind end, and how quick and snappy their reflexes are. And of course, they also look at the overall conformation with an eye for soundness. The criteria that are evaluated by the inspectors are rhythm, takeoff power, reflexes, attention, overview, jumping ability or scope, foreleg position, back technique, and hind leg technique. When the liner deflected to the right, it indicates a positive quality, and having the index go beyond the shaded area indicate that the stallion produces better than the average. If the bars go to the left, that is a less desirable trait. So, looking at the breeding values of some jumping stallion that you can see here, they don't all have all those qualities. So it's up to the breeders to make sure that they match their mare well, playing to their strength and shoring up their weaknesses. Here are Balou de Rouet's value. Solid, consistent producer of all the qualities that jumper breeders like to see in the jump. That is part of the reason for his popularity and his success as a sire. He is strong in all the categories. For a while, here in North America, he had four approved sons at stud. Bliss, Bombalu, Banderas, and Amazing. In discussing his influence with Karen Morgenstern Jimenez of SCF Farm, who bred probably more Balou de Rouet foal than anyone in North America, she points out that he also has a lot of qualities that the hunter breeders were looking for. First of all, he's a very pretty stallion, and he passes that on. He has a lot of eye appeal, and in part it's his Sabino coloring with, you know, the, the four socks and the big white blaze, but he also, he's just like a very pretty looking horse. 
He moves in a sweeping motion, much prized by the hunter discipline. He also tend to pass on a bit of a downhill way of going and that more of a horizontal look is also appreciated as long as it, does, as it doesn't come at the expense of scope and a nice round jump. And in this case, it does not. His offspring are also very light on their feet, seeming to barely touch the ground, making their movement look almost effortless. And for the huntering, one has to pair him with quieter mares as he tends to pass on sharpness and sensitivity. The Balou du Roué are not dull, and some say that they are not for amateurs, but it depends a lot on the mare, of course. Another breeder uh, that had multiple offspring by him, Suzanne Tricky of Bloomington Farm, pointed out that they're very intuitive and that the fillies were particularly sensitive and not very quick to trust. However, once they are won over by some good, sensible handling, they have a very particular, loyal, generous temperament well suited to the highest level of the sport. And usually they are aimed at top riders. His agility and his blood makes him a good match for eventing horses too, and he has produced quite a few four-star and five-star eventers over the year. Now, he is not perfect, of course not, no horse is. So in, he inherited and passes on the slightly longish and sloping pastern of his sire and sometime a bit of a long back. Now, none of these seem to have bothered Balou de Rouet during his career, but one always tries to produce good confirmation. He also doesn't score very high in the movement that the jumper breeders usually look for. Again, that movement is a bit different than what the hunter breeders desire. So his data shows that he produced flatter mover, so that, so for a good jumper, he would need a mare with more jump in their canter and more knee also. But ultimately, it's how he jumps that really matters, and he jumps. He is positive for WFFS, and so that's something to keep in mind when considering breeding to any mare, they need to be tested to make sure that they're not carriers. Uh, a lot of his sons are also positive, so that's part of his legacy, unfortunately. Also of concern to some, he does not reliably pass on his height. Now, he's a good-sized stallion himself, but his offspring, some of them, can be on the smaller side, so he is not recommended for smaller frame mare. Perhaps unsurprisingly, over the years, he's been paired mostly with mares from heavier lines, the lines from Argentinus, uh, Cuidam de Revel, Diamant Semillé, as well as that of Granus, big, solid horses. So yeah, he crosses well with those solid mares that need more refinement, more blood, more reflexes. He brings lightness, agility to these really powerful jumping line without losing any of the scope, as you saw in his, um, his scores. He also has another important quality, setting him apart from other Baloube du Rue's son, the quality of his fertility. His fresh as well as his frozen semen remains reliable, and that, I found out, was not a given in today's top jumping bloodlines, so he has an advantage there. Now, while getting on in years, he remains in 2025 a popular stallion, approved with most stallion registry around the world. I actually have a filly of his right in my yard, and I have to say she very much has a lot of the qualities that I've mentioned in this video. If you enjoy the practical, science-based side of raising horses, you're in the right place, because that's pretty much all I talk about. I also like to share extra material that doesn't always fit into my regular videos. Things like uh, deeper explanation, or behind the scene updates, and bonus discussion. You can find all those in the member-only video right here on my channel, as well as on my Patreon page. And by the way, a huge thank you to my current Patreon supporters that you can see on the screen here. If you'd like to join them, you can check out my Patreon. The link is here and also in the description. 